Jackson Brown is one of America's most important songwriters. His modern standards elegantly chronicle a wildly metamorphic time in music and politics. And as a social reformer, he remained a passionate leader in the environmental and anti-nuclear movements, as well as scores of other important social causes. These days I seem to think a lot. Born in Germany, Brown grew up in Los Angeles, performing in local folk palaces like the Troubadour. He briefly joined the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, who recorded early versions of his songs, as did Tom Rush, Joan Baez, Linda Ronstadt, and the Birds. In a short but memorable sojourn into New York City, he found his first place in the musical universe in, of all places, Andy Warhol's world. As part of that scene, he backed up Tim Buckley and singer Nico of the Velvet Underground. She sang three of his songs on her debut album, Chelsea Girl. After returning to LA, he signed with David Geffen's new Asylum label and soon found his way into the top ten. On his next album, For Every Man, Jackson started working with multi-instrumentalist maestro David Lindley. The song Take It Easy, co-written with one-time roommate Glenn Fry, became a worldwide hit for the Eagles. I learned through the Jackson ceiling in my floor exactly how to write songs, because Jackson would get up and he'd play the first verse and first chorus, and he'd play it 20 times. I'm up there going, so that's how you do it. Time, persistence. The Sky was a masterpiece of soulful anthems that mirrored the hope, dreams, and malaise of the era, featuring Lindley's violin. The title track was featured in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. In the wake of his success, Jackson was determined to help other artists reach a wider audience. His lifelong friendship with Warren Zevon was cemented when he co-produced Zevon's first two solo albums with their mutual musical pal, Wadi Wachtel. Say a prayer for the Pretender. He followed up with The Pretender and Running on Empty. He toured with The Eagles and Warren, Bruce, and Bonnie. Running on Empty. Running on Empty. The best-selling Running on Empty was recorded in buses and hotel rooms. Just a little bit longer. And contains Brown's classic tribute to his road crew and fans, the loadout stay. Oh, make the joyful sound. There was also a warmth and an intimacy, an acoustic aura to Jackson's vocals. And his recordings have always boasted an authentic and organic sound, as his voice and acoustic instruments seem to express a depth that made you feel as if you were inside his soul. Tonight we are celebrating improvements in human rights here in Chile. World in motion, speed your changes. Politics was becoming ever important to him. One of the founders of the anti-nuclear movement, Muse, Jackson passionately supported important causes with benefits like no nukes. He also performed at concerts for Farm Aid, Nicaragua, and the Christic Institute. Holdout included Somebody's Baby from the Fast Times at Ridgemont High soundtrack, Jackson's biggest commercial hit. albums, For Every Man, Late for the Sky, and The Pretender, were selected by Rolling Stone magazine in their 500 best albums of all time. And he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by Bruce Springsteen. I know the Eagles got in first, but let's face it, these are the songs they wish they'd written. I wish I'd written them myself. At the Grammys in 2016, he and the Eagles performed Take It Easy in honor of the late Glenn Fry. Brown 
remains an active musician and social activist, and has always answered the call, appearing at benefits for friends and causes that matter the most to him. Let the buildings keep our children dry. In the fullness of time, Jackson's songs have become perhaps even more poignant, pertinent, and powerful. It is an honor and privilege to present the 2018 NABTEC Les Paul Innovation Award to Jackson Brown. <laughs> You know who played that chord? Fucking Jackson Brown, that's who played it. It's my great pleasure to introduce a man I love and admire, who we all appreciate, Jackson Brown. Thank you, Tech, um, for this incredible honor and for putting me together on the same night with the section. And um, I think everybody who knows me knows that I'm, I'm the furthest thing from a technical person. I, I really, I know nothing, nothing. And that's why it means so much to me to be honored by you because I've relied on uh, the kindness of engineers and, uh, and their knowledge of the studio and equipment my whole life. I, I, um, I, I was really, I, I'm so delighted that Peter got to talk about the section uh, because I followed him around for a, a while, for several years, just doing what he did hiring who he hired and going to the studios that he hired because I knew I didn't know. And um, it led me into um, the company of the players that you've heard honored here tonight. And, and a long list of engineers who I'm really fortunate to have gotten to work with. Because I'm, I'm not technical in the least. It's absurd that I have a studio. Except that when, as soon as we started doing shows, as soon as we started making records we liked, we wanted them to sound that way live, and so we started buying stuff. The first thing I ever bought was an LA-2A, LA-2A, um, out of like a little electronic shop that was attached to a Sunset Sound. And I just started, every now and then I'd buy something, and the more money we made, the best two parts about making money is that you can hire, you can pay your friends more for playing with you, and you can buy stuff, and buy gear. And, um, I'm, um, I'm certain that everybody knows more than I do about, about how to use this gear, but I am an example of what I think is present in, in Les Paul's example, you know, which is that he heard something he wanted to get, and he figured out how to get it. And that's as simple as that. I'm the simplest possible. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy you want to sell your gear to, but um, you know, first there has to be like a really discerning engineer sitting there next to me, and I'll look at him and say, how can we do this? Or, oh, that's great, what did you just do? What was that? And, and, and I, I sort of learned by doing. Most of all, let me just say that for the section, for, to be, to be um, a songwriter in LA that wanted to make a record and you could barely sing, who didn't really like the way he sounded when he sang, it meant the world to have Russ Kunkel step up to me one day, and we, have, we had some friends in, in common, and he said, I, I, you wouldn't know unless I told you this, but I, I want to play on your record, so when you, when you get ready to make your record, be sure you call me, all right? And that led to my getting to play with Lee Sklar, and I think, uh, not to yeah, contradict sure, Peter, but I think that the first time Russ Kunkel and Lee Sklar played with Craig Durge was on my session for Rock Me on the Water. And I always felt like, like I had a kind of, um, you know, I had, I had uh, 
a kind of proprietary interest in that in that band, the section. I know I knew they were James but James's band, but I didn't didn't keep me from hiring them whenever I could. And it's many years before I could afford to take them on the road. And uh, and when I finally could, it was to it was to make Running on Empty. And uh, and I did what I had always been doing. With, yeah. Not to go too long about this, you know, I, 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 had, I had to have them. I'd been making records with them for several years. They played on three of my records. They played on my first record, my second album, my fourth album. And I knew I, I could do this. I had this idea. <laughs> I had this idea that if I just could record every show, I should record everything. And even what happened backstage, and even, what ha even the conversations that happened on the bus, that I can make something really memorable about what it was like to be a touring musician and what it was like out there. And the first thing I, uh, I was telling Peter Asher what I wanted to do, and I, I, I said, you know, they get some really great uh, cassette recorders now, maybe we just record everything. Nakamichi's got this great new cassette. And he said, well, 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 well. <laughs> at least take a two track. You know, at least take some, you know, like take a Studer or something or a Revox or something. And, and, and uh, so he talked me out, and actually right at that time, Shoko said, well, we got a Studer 24 track, you can take that and we we'll record every, every gig. So, I mean, if there's anything innovative that I have done, and there, there are maybe one or two things that, that haven't been done before, it was to take a Studer 24 track, put it in a room, not listen to it, make a live album without ever listening to anything back. Because you just had a guy back there with headphones on, just checking each individual track to make sure it wasn't distorting. The great engineer, Greg Ladani, who, who had mixed up the pretender, said he'd, he'd get on a headphone and he'd call back to the guy checking the, the he said, he'd noticed that the, that the level might have changed, that Russell wasn't playing the kick as, as hard. And he'd say, what, do you, what kind of levels do you have on the, on the kick drum? And the guy'd say, plus three, like you said, and he just knew, he just intuitively, he just he'd run back in there, look at the thing and said, that's not plus three, that's plus three. And then run back to the front of the house where he was continued mixing the show. And, <laughs> and we never listened to anything back. But also, we were gonna make a double album and it was gonna be a, like every other live album, your chance to re-record the songs you wanted to do better or do them live or give people what they'd already heard but only live. And, and uh, we started listening to what we had, and, and it was Russell who said, like after the first show, he said, you know, you should just, just make this an album of new songs. Just do the new songs. Don't, don't bother redoing the old songs and, and you know. And uh, that's how we came to make a live album of new songs on stage and in the buses and the backstage. And uh, I, think, I think that was innovative. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you that because everybody here who's younger than me, everybody does that now. Everybody records everything, but at the time, it hadn't been done, and it hadn't you hadn't been able to do it unless you were willing to, to, um, you know, make a live album that you don't listen to while you're making. Um, I guess I guess I want to say that. Uh, the one guy who I, I, I really have kind of based almost everything I did on is not here tonight, and that's David Lindley. Yeah. David Lindley, who uh, gave me the emotional center, gave me the emotional feedback. It was in playing with David that allowed me to, to, um, to just go by touch, just go by my sense of feel. And once again, without the engineers I worked with, I couldn't have done that. I mean, all I just wanted to make sure is that people were recording right away, that we were always able to record, capture everything. And um, I've, when I, I made a compilation record, I, uh, I was so proud when I made out the credits to my, to my best work, and I looked at the engineers I'd worked with. I'd worked with John Haney. I'd worked with Al Schmidt. I'd worked with Ed Cherney. I'd worked with Greg Ladani. And, uh, I worked with Paul Dieter. I worked with Bob Clearmountain. These people who know everything that I don't know, but who put their technical expertise at the service of the music, at the service of the song. And I'm indebted to them. And uh, 
I'm indebted to you all who make the gear <laughs> that I don't even know how to turn on. <laughs> but that I could not do anything that I do without. So thank you so much for this award. And, uh, I want to dedicate this to uh, Greg Ladani, who should have, would have been here tonight. Well, I'm whom I miss all the time, and whom I, I, I uh, have to share my successes with. This is to Greg Ladani. I want to get the section up here. We'll play a song. Yeah.